So I'm, I'm here with a group of teachers at a school in The Hague, and, 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 and you're the director, and what's your name? I'm the principal, Prin Henriette Bouvet. And this, what type of school is this? A Montessori school. Okay. And it's got three levels, MAVO, HAVO, and VBO. Okay. So it's pre-academic, uh, college, and uh, vocational. Pre-vocational. 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 Yeah. And so you take all levels of kids here? Uh, no, because we've got uh, the pre-vocational level is divided into four sub-levels. Yes. And we've only got the top level, which is not practical. Okay, so theoretical. Theoretical. So a lot of these kids basically will be heading either into a uh, a college or a university track, most likely. Most pu most pupils from our school, yes, they do. We've got nine hundred pupils, and every year there's like one hundred and twenty kids taking their getting their diplomas, mm -hmm. and there's about thirty thirty five that are enrolling into vocational courses afterwards. And, and for those vocational courses, what, what might they study at the higher level of vocational? What type of things might they go into? Anything like graphic design and um, arty things, mm -hmm. but also the more economic or technical. Uh, technical. Well, technical is not so much. Mm -hmm. Architecture, yeah. Architecture. Oh, no, 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 no. And and they're gonna yeah. they're gonna do this starting when they finally go to the vocational school. They'll do this at about age what? 15, Sixteen. Sixteen. They'll jump to the next uh, uh, level. Yeah, those are the youngest. Right. Uh, the higher vocational levels start when children are seventeen. Or eighteen. Seventeen, eighteen. So that would be more. Vocational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also vocational. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's college. 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 That's we talk about yeah. words. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> but but the, but but I think the point is is that you you clearly understand. It seems to me of all the countries I've, I've visited, and really it's deeply entrenched here that not all kids are going to go to college. Yes. Okay. And in the U.S. system, there's a belief that all kids are go, going to go to college. So that's where I see the difference. And you're, this, you're making that distinction where you start tracking kids and putting them in different groups at age, what? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So some people in America would say that's not fair. Well, that, I think I agree with that. Okay. It is not fair. So it's then... It's not very... Um, how do you say that? The results aren't very good. So, I think that a middle school would be a lot better. It's middle school meaning what age? Till 15. Till 15. Til 15. 15. I think there's a wide belief in this country that many people think that it's better to go till 15, but historically yeah. we make this, uh, this break at 12 and uh, we tried uh, 30 years ago. Uh, there was a big movement to, to try mm -hmm. to create uh, other type of schools till 15 years, but that was failed. And now we are still in the same well, I, as I mentioned to you, the, the dropout rates nationwide, generally of Latinos and African Americans, is roughly 50% in America. What we have something called is called our, our knockout year, you know, where you get knocked out. Mm -hmm. That's between ninth and 10th grade. So that falls between age um, 14 and 15. So if there, I see it as if there's not something there before to catch the kid's interest and see that there are options for them, then they leave school anyways. Mm -hmm. So, well, in Holland, it would be very unusual for yes. children to, to leave before they've got their starters qualifications. Right, even with the immigrants here yes. coming in. Even yes, yes, we have put a lot of money, especially in keeping the immigrants into our school system. So, if the kids don't go to school and they're not coming to school, what type of safety nets do you have to go and get them? Let's say they just stop showing up to school, because this happens a lot in yes. America. What do you do? And I know in Canada they had some excellent safety net systems. What do you have? We have a care system within the school, so mm -hmm. we put that into action first. And then every school has got links to like the care system in the community, in, mm -hmm. in town. And then social workers and things yeah, like social that. social workers. So the children and the parents are called in by these officers, by these uh, civil servants, mm -hmm. and they can be fined. And, if they don't go to yeah, school. And we've also got like small schools for children who, don't, who can't adapt into the normal system. Mm -hmm. And give me an example of that. 
small it's, schools. Well, it's not like school. It's like a, um, a safety net. Mm -hmm. so it's called rebound, and children who are kicked out of school because of their behavioral pro problems, yes. uh, they enroll for like three months into a small community where they can learn how to behave, and then they enroll into a different school afterwards. And does this so, normally work? It helps. Yes. So they've gotten all, yeah. But of course, like in big cities like The Hague and Amsterdam, you've got dropouts as well. Mm -hmm. But it's more, uh, we get like uh, paperwork we have to fill in. Mm -hmm. and there's like every six weeks, there's right. a big meeting about how many children, uh, which children it are and who's going to take care of them. But your dropouts aren't anywhere near what they're in America. No, no, no. I mean, these are... They're accountable in the city. It's mm -hmm. like... There is a, there's a whole country, there is a group which don't go to school, mm -hmm. uh, but they are really uh, categorized, mm -hmm. they are known. I think there are not many children really unknown. That means that they go in the street, when yeah. they are uh, 13, 14, they go in the street, don't live they anywhere at home, or don't have a roof, they disappear about. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, there, there will always be some of them, but it's really, really uh, very small group. And what age can you start working here, legally? Without going to school? Yeah, just it's 18. Yeah. 18. you have to be 18. 18. So you can't work for a business until you're 18 years old, or you have no? To go to school you have to as go well. to school oh. one, yeah. one day a week, for example. Yeah. Then yes. you can, like the after, 16, after 16, you can have a job, but then you have, you have to you go to school. To go oh, so this is another way to keep kids in school. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so if they want to go earn money, they, they have to be enrolled in this program. Exactly. And if they don't do this program, then is this a government program, a government yes. rule? Yes. And if they don't do it, then they'll lose their job. Is yeah, that? Or they don't no. get a, they don't get money from the government when they're unemployed. Like until you're 23, mm -hmm. you, you need to go to school to improve your start qualifications. Right. And right. If you don't do that, right. you don't get the money if you live independently. For yeah. Yourself. So this law wouldn't exist in America, of course. So the problem is, is that so many kids at 16, even if they dropped out and they could find a job nobody's going to hire them anyways because they're high school dropouts because there's so many yeah. people that with high school degrees now that can work. Work for low wages. Yeah. Yeah. Work for yes. low wages. Well, we, we are now in, in all the big cities. It's like called a chain from zero till 23. So there's also a lot of focus on the children, how they enter schools, if they know enough Dutch and how the parents are behaving. Okay.